No, I need some wine. Uh, okay, so for this problem, to verify, we're obviously going to go and look at our left side. And you know, we're just going to want to apply our operations. So when we look at our paper, what we have is we want to see. OK, so the main important thing, ladies and gentlemen, is we want to look into multiply. Now, unfortunately, like the last problem we did, that was a difference of two squares. So it's pretty easy to multiply that through. However, this is not a difference of two squares. It is a difference, but these are not the same square numbers. So therefore, we're going to have to apply FOIL, or just our property of multiplying two binomials. So therefore, when we do that, we have tangent squared of x times cosine squared of x minus tangent squared of x plus cosine squared of x minus 1 equals our right side. We're just going to leave it like that. Oh. You remember what I know. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is let some, I'm kind of converting, we have to add all these terms that do not seem like they're like terms, do they? All right? No. These are none of the like terms. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert to sine and cosine and see what kind of common denominators that I might be able to get. So sine, tangent squared is going to be sine squared over cosine squared of x times cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x over cosine squared of x plus cosine squared of x over 1 minus 1. Okay, so I just kind of converted everything to a fraction, and if it wasn't a fraction, then I put it uh, on top of one. Now, what we do, what we notice about this is, first of all, these cosines are going to divide into one, just leaving us with a sine squared over one. And then, if I wanted to add all these up, all I simply need to do is multiply by cosine. I think that's the problem that I did here. Um, actually, I don't remember what I did here. So therefore, we have sine squared times cosine squared. Oh, is that minus? Did I cosine plus one minus one? I did something wrong. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. OK. Uh, well, I, I don't know. Let's just rewrite it and let's go through it. Uh, my work's not very clear. I can't remember what I did. So let's just go through that and see what happens. OK. So that means, ladies and gentlemen, what I need to, need to do is get these all to have the same common denominator, right? And then I can add them. So I'll multiply by. Cosine squared over cosine squared of x. Here I multiply by cosine squared of x. Oh, no, that was it. I was right. Oh, my God. Well, look it. We don't need to go through. You guys notice I have a sine squared and a cosine squared, right? Mm -hmm. So these sine squared mm -hmm. plus cosine squared, what does that add up to? One. One. I just rearranged it in my problem. So now I have 1 minus tangent squared of x um, plus 1. I'm sorry. So I have 1 minus tangent squared of x minus 1 equals my right side. Now, 1 minus 1, those now cancel to negative to 0. And I'm just left with tangent squared of x. You're right. You don't need to add them up. I had those sine and cosine squares right there. I just couldn't see them as I wrote it in there. Do you guys see what, do you guys see what I did? Don't need to. I was thinking, that's what I was thinking I would have to do, but I didn't have to because I already have sine squared and cosine squared. Sine, ki, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So that equals 1 right there, minus, that's really tangent squared, so I can convert that back to tangent. And then my original problem said minus 1, minus, so 1 minus tangent squared minus 1. The 1's now go to 0, so just leave me with negative tangent squared of x, which is on the right side. All right. So I converted to sine and cosine so I could actually only cancel it to divide that out to 1. And then I actually already had um, everything else I needed. Kind of forgot. Made my work confusing, I guess. OK.